So I want us to go to um, Luke 10, I believe. Luke 10, verse 19. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10 and 19. You have it? Uh, let's hear it. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. What version are you reading? King James. Uh-huh. Read, it again. Read it again. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Behold, mm. I give unto you power to tread on serpents mm. and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing mm. shall be by any means hurt you. Mm-hmm. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not mm. that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. One more time. From 19. Mm-hmm. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Mm-hmm. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall, shall by any means hurt you. Mm-hmm. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not, mm-hmm. that the spirits are subject unto you, mm-hmm. but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Now, I'm going to explain why Jesus is speaking about their names being written in heaven. And uh, there's a big confusion, because many times when people think and read that, they think Jesus is speaking about their going to heaven. When Jesus says that, um, behold, I've given you power. But if you read it in Greek, actually, it's uh, authority and power. Behold, I've given you authority and power, because you cannot have power without authority, according to God. Behold, I have given you authority and power to tread upon serpents, and they will not harm you. But nevertheless, do not rejoice about this, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Now, when Jesus was speaking about their names being written in heaven, he was not talking about salvation. Many times when people read this, they are thinking about salvation. That's not what Jesus was talking about. In fact, they were not even connected at all. I I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, Can you hear me? Are you sure you're awake? Let me talk to the people online. Online, are you ready? Are Are you awake? Let me see if, you're, if you can hear me, type one, so that I know that you're with me. Type number one, so that I know you're with me. Type one, so that I know you can hear me and you're with me. So understand this. Their rejoicing was not that they cast out demons. When they came back to Jesus, they said, Lord, you will not believe that demons were subject Unto us, even demons were subject unto us. What impressed them was that demons were obedient. It was not just the act of driving out demons. What shocked them is that the demons obeyed them the same way they obeyed Jesus. So when they came back to the Lord, can you start from 18? Start from 18. Uh, actually, start from 17. Let's, let's move it back so that you can get the full picture. Amen. And the 70 returned again with joy, mm-hmm. saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Notice, their joy was not that just that they cast out demons. Their joy was that these demons were subject. Do you know what a subject is? A subject is somebody that is bound to your word. You say, go left, they go left. Jump high, jump high. Lay down, lay down. Move right, move left, move right, move left. They were shocked that demons were subject unto them. And remember, Jesus is not talking to 12. He is speaking to 70 people. Because you have to remember the 12 were the main ones. That his legacy was going to be spread through. But he had way more than 12 disciples. The 12 were the, the main ones, the chosen ones. I don't know if somebody's getting this. Uh, keep going. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Mm-hmm. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions mm-hmm. and over all the power of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yes. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not mm-hmm. that the spirits are subject unto you, mm-hmm. but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The disciples discovered, they discovered something. They discovered that power was not enough. Wow. 
they realize there is something better than power. If you have it, spirits become subject. That is why when they came back, because remember, they were already being used to pray with Jesus. So they will pray for people with Jesus. They will pray with people with Jesus. Then Jesus sends them out, says, now you guys go and do what I do. But they come back, they are impressed that even demons obey us. And Jesus tells them, "Uh, don't rejoice because of this. There is something that happened in heaven. That is making them obey you. Every believer has power. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have power. But not every believer has authority. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Demons don't obey you because you have power. Because Satan also has power. All authority and power belongs to God. So even the power the devil is using belongs to God. It's not his. He did not create new power. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Everything you see witches and wizards do that is powerful, it's not their power. The power that was given to them, they perverted it. But there is something that the devil was fighting for. The devil was cast down because he wanted authority. He wanted a high place. His issue was not power. His issue was, I want my throne to be lifted because if my throne is lifted, then most spirits become subject unto me. So I can control them and I can rule and I can be like God. Because what makes God God is that everything is subject unto him. So, so, what makes you powerful is not the mere fact that you have power. That is why you find there is a difference. Somebody can go in service and they will pray. And there may be one or two demons that come out of people. But they don't have the power to take hold of the atmosphere like this. That by their word, if they speak... Every demon, whether it is a witch or whatever, somebody that even didn't know that they have a demon, that day that demon is coming out. Why? There is a difference simply, there is a big difference between merely having power and having authority. What separates us in the kingdom of God is authority. Because there is no child of God that doesn't have power. But the measure of authority you have been given determines how much power comes out of you. It is like the power, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, 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 What is it called? Controller. It measures how much you are allowed to produce. If you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, can you go Genesis 1 26? Are you there? Yes. Yes. Okay, read it. Let's see it. And God said... Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle. One more time. Uh And God said, let us make man in our image, Uh after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Notice, God said dominion, not power. He did not say, let us make man in our image and let him have power. God gave him dominion. Dominion is authority. Mm -hmm. Total Control. That's what dominion means. To dominate. Like you are the top of the food chain. Dominion. Then it tells him, subdue the earth. Subdue the earth. Control it. To subdue means control. Subdue it. You have, all, you, you have dominion. Control it. So when God is empowering a believer, but there is a reason why many don't walk in authority. Everyone has power, but not everyone gets authority. 
Let me show you how much authority Apostle Paul had. Apostle Paul was a bad boy. He was a very bad boy. Yes. The guy was bad. Amen. One of the sons in the church was misbehaving and took his father's wife and messed up big time and he would not repent. So Apostle Paul came up with a solution. His solution was, when you gather together to pray, my spirit will come and be with you. And I will go and take that boy and deliver him unto Satan for the destruction of his body, but for the salvation of his soul. Do you see how much dangerous these guys were? Ah, Today they will call him a wizard. Right. He's saying, and my spirit, when you guys are gathered to pray, he didn't say the Holy Spirit, he said, my spirit will come, I will come yeah. and join you where you are. Yeah. And I will go and take yeah. such, yeah. give him to Satan, I will deliver him, say, Satan, kill this body, but don't touch the soul, because the soul is going to heaven. Yeah. Right. That's right. There are so many dimensions of this Christianity, a lot of Christians have no clue. Can you find the scripture before they say I made it up? (laughs) It's a very dangerous thing. It's a very strange thing. I've never seen anybody calling Apostle Paul astral projector. (laughs) He's telling you my spirit will come and be with you. He did not say, I will be with you in spirit, meaning I'm supporting you. He said, no, my spirit being with you. That's right. When you guys are in that location praying, my spirit will come and be with you. Yeah. I will join you in prayer, but I will take that guy's spirit, his body, and I will give him to Satan wow. for the destruction of his flesh, That's good. salvation of his soul. You found it? We have it. Mm-hmm. Okay, hear this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, uh-huh. verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, mm-hmm. and such fornication as not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one mm-hmm. should have his father's wife. Mm-hmm. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Mm-hmm. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present. Notice, he's saying, even though I am not there, I have already been there, and I know what is going on. Without being reported. I already have judged. I know exactly what to do. (laughs) Keep going. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present, concerning Mm -hmm. him that hath so done this deed. Mm -hmm. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Ah, this guy was bad. How do you come up with a formula like that? <laughs> said, I, I've already judged among you concerning the one who did this. I already know what he did. And I've already decided. When you guys gather together to pray, my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus, I will come and I will deliver such to the devil for the destruction of his body, but for the salvation of his soul, so that he might make it to heaven. We don't want to lose him. But let's just take him out. <laughs> it's not me. Your Bible said it. If you don't like it, read, don't read your Bible. Or take it up with God. If God is telling you do not be ignorant of devices, he means it. Because you can never fight a war you don't know. Imagine going to a fight. You carried a table knife. Your enemy brought a machete. They will kill you not because you did not have a chance to get a gun. Something more superior. You just didn't know what weapon they were going to have. Yes. Yes. So whenever we are dealing with the spiritual warfare, it's not just a matter, I cover myself. Haven't you noticed people say, I cover myself, I protect myself. They're the guys who have the most battles. It doesn't seem like they're winning. Mm-hmm. They're always fighting. They're always fighting. It's always one thing. It's always another thing. It's always one thing. It's all... This reason is very simple. The reason is very simple. You cannot overcome what you don't know. That's you can right. never overcome what you don't know. That's right. You see, the grace and the mercy of God keeps us. It protects us. Mm-hmm. But it maintains us unto maturity. 
I love this verse that Bishop Donko always says, those who have matured in exercising what? Their spirit and their discernment. There is a maturity that you need to have. Can you find that scripture for me? You know, it, it, the, 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 there, is a, there is a certain level of maturity you need to master. A mature person is an informed person. You don't mature because you are old. You mature because you are informed. An informed person is a mature person. A person who is not informed is not mature. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Are you sure you can hear me? An informed person is a mature person. Anyone that is not informed is not mature. Amen. You can't be. How can you be? Yeah, let's, I mean, let's be real. You're not informed. You don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. Can you read it for me? You found it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 5, verse 12. Mm-hmm. For, when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Mm-hmm. And are become such as have need of milk and mm-hmm. not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he uh, is uh, listen to that. Everyone that uses milk is what? Unskillful. So just because you have the Bible doesn't mean you're skillful. That's right. That's good. You see, what Bishop Kelly is showing us, he can tell you names of spirits from Scripture because he's skillful. He's skillful. Not because he's looking for names of spirits. He has just matured where God has opened his eyes to see, I remember this spirit, here's the name, that spirit, here's the... There is a certain maturity that has been given by God. So just because you open the Bible and you preach, I see a lot of, to be honest with you, I'm going to say it and it's going to sound offensive. But it's the truth anyway. If you ever practice witchcraft you will never be superstitious unless you're not fully delivered you will not assume people are doing witchcraft you will know they do witchcraft because you can see that's right that's right if you have ever dealt with spirits for real not wanna be because we have a lot of people who wanna be witches that Mm -hmm. became saved you know, they, they used to be sorcerers or witches and they became saved and all of a sudden they think they know. But if you look at their ministry, they don't deal with evil spirits. Right, right. They can talk about them, right. but the power to deal with them is not there because right. God will never permit you. See, every journey of our life is added into what we are doing. God doesn't take away your experience. Your experience is actually needed for you to help people more. Yes. So you won't see things and assume it is something. You know, nowadays right. even you see there's something called prophetic acts. Prophetic acts don't make sense to the secular believer because to them that is practicing witchcraft. But don't you know witchcraft involves invoking a spirit? That's right. That's if right. there is no invoking of an evil spirit, it is not witchcraft. That's right. Amen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Mm. It is not actually witchcraft. If I take, do you know, uh, 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 my son, Uncle Fred, they thought that he had cancer. They thought that he had cancer. They, they uh, um, checked his colon and all that. They saw it was swollen in there. They're like, man, we have to cut and, and put a bag on your side because, man, this, uh, this thing has to be taken out because this is cancerous. Uncle Fred told me, Papa, they are going to tell me to, I'm doing this surgery on this day. I told him, Uncle Fred, do you trust me? He said, yes, I trust you. I told him, come to the house. I said, no matter what, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord told me to take, bring your own bottle of water. He brought a bottle of water. The Lord told me, just pray for it and give it to him. Tell him to drink it for seven days. Mm. I know they want him to go on surgery on this. They tell him not to go, to delay it. After seven days, let him go. So I took water and I gave it to him. I told him, do you trust me? He said, yes, Papa, of course I trust you. I told him, seven days then, you go to the hospital. 
After seven days, he went. They were like, you are delaying this. They went, they did the thing. He said, I told him, request it. He said, Papa, I don't want to have a bag. I told him, don't worry. After seven days, go back. Tell them to rerun the tests. Avoid them for seven days. And then tell them to rerun the test. Tell them to put the, the camera down. They put the camera down. The doctor was like, wait. Look at this before and look at this mm -hmm. after. Where is that mm -hmm. mask that we saw? <laughs> Gone. Gone. They told him, whatever you are doing, keep doing it. <laughs> he came back again. They cleared him. They said, there's no need. We don't know what happened. Let's just let it go and let it be like that. Everything that people don't understand is witchcraft, but they don't understand. How can you be a witch? How can you be a witch? How can you be a sorcerer? And you assume that something done without invoking of an evil spirit is witchcraft. You're just unskilled. Yeah. See maturity. Mm -hmm. Jesus spit on the ground, took mud, put it on somebody. Why? Why did he need to do that? What was the reason to do that? It was a prophetic act. There are blind people that came to Jesus, and he said, they say, well, I would like to see, and he said, then see. And their eyes will come. But this one, he couldn't do it like that. He spat on the ground, made something, put it in his eyes, said, go and wash it on this pool. Specific instruction. Why? Why? Because there are things that God will have you to do some weird stuff sometimes. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense at all to the common eye. But nevertheless, it is 100% God. Why did they need to cleanse people in scripture? Somebody sick with leprosy. Jesus will say, be clean, and they are clean. Some people will have to go into a pool. They get in, they come out, and then they are Why is the same God doing it differently? Same God. Why is he choosing to do it differently? Why? <laughs> so if you pigeonhole God... If you pigeonhole God, you have just played yourself. Because the moment you say God cannot, he will. That's right. The moment you say ah, God cannot, he will. We have become superstitious. We have become people that walk in fear. Yeah. Yet we should be people who walk in love. And perfect love casts out what? Fear. Yeah. If you are truly have the love of God, you will never walk in fear. Amen. You will know things, but you will have victory over them because what you know, what you possess is greater and is better. Yeah. The Bible says it like this. Same spirit, different ministrations. That's right. Same spirit, different ministration. The same Lord, different methods. This is why this is this is why it's very important for you to know. Knowledge is not bad. Knowledge is good. Amen. If you have the wisdom of God, you have the spirit of God, you should pray for knowledge so that you know how things work. Because if you know how things work, then you have a better chance to help a lot of people. Yes. Yes. When you see me delivering people or praying for the miraculous or whatever, it seems like I always know who will come out of the wheelchair, who will not come out of the wheelchair, who this is. This one, the eyes will open, the ears will open. This would, I seem to know because there is something that God has taught me that allows me to see. Mm -hmm. That you may not be at the place of seeing, but there is something that can be given to you that no matter what the situation is, the word of God from you becomes final. Yes. Here is the mystery of receiving authority. Jesus told the disciples, 
and you shall have power after that the Holy Spirit has come on you. Men and women that walk in authority, not in influence only, right. authority. You can have influence and not have authority. Wow. Mm-hmm. You can be popular without authority. Amen. You can have power without authority. Amen. Authority is something that is delegated only by God. And there is a system to align yourself to share in the authority that God has made available. That is why not every man of God carries the grace and the ability to shift certain things. Mm -hmm. Authority makes God back up your words. Power doesn't. Power is still in your effort. Right. Wow. That's right. Power is still in your realm to push. I will pray. I will fast. And I will shake. Authority works differently. Authority makes God back your words up. And in order for God to do that, your name has to be in heaven. He has to have trusted you. To place you in a place that he knows you will never abuse it. He has to shape you. He has to put you through the flame. Mm -hmm. Until you become a vessel of gold, then he can put you in a place of authority. Mm. Without that, he cannot. Because if you get, imagine if the devil had authority. Hmm. No one would survive. Mm -hmm. Because authority compels people. That's power right. doesn't. That's right. Power has to inflict some kind of pain for somebody to listen. Right. Authority controls. Yeah. Right. Authority yeah. controls. Yeah. Authority has the power to control. Yeah. Even if somebody doesn't want to listen, they will listen. Right. right. Mm, glory. Jesus comes on a boat. He comes into a city. And the man possessed by devils, legions of demons, runs and bows himself immediately. Says, Jesus, I know who you are. You're the son of the living God. What do you want with us? Notice, immediately they've made themselves subject. That's right. Immediately their posture was, what do you want with us? That's right. They are already being, the fact that Jesus showed up in a territory. Yes. Evil spirits are already reporting themselves. Sir, I have been in this area. What do you want with me? May you become like that after this fast. I said, may you become like that after this fast. May you become like this after this fast. That when you show up in a place, territorial spirits shake. Territorial spirits bow themselves. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, let me tell you a story, uh, an interesting story. When we bought this building, when we bought this building, before we even set up the church, we just bought the building. Because the church that was, uh, the, the people who owned this building before, and we changed it, they were a church also. They had held it for like 10 years, but there was nothing going on with it. So when the pandemic came, it was the time for them to sell. But already we saw the building, we knew the place without ever being there. God showed, uh, showed us this thing. When we got the place, there's a few days that the Lord told me to pray here. And I spent time and I prayed here. And uh, when we had our first service, the Lord already told me, uh, now the, the spirits in the area have let go of this place because you will control now the atmosphere. That's right. That's right. Do you That's know right. what happened the next day, Bishop? People had picketing signs. People were picketing across the street. They don't know anything about the church. They have never heard anything about the church. But they were picketing, resisting the church. Yet the people have never listened to anything I've said. Right. They were just bothered that this church has come to this place. Yeah. Wow. 
They were okay with a church that didn't have power. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was comfortable. Yes, sir. Oh, glory. People were picketing big time. I don't know if you remember, Apostle. I remember Mike came, we were having dinner upstairs, and he was like, Papa Lo, I, I don't know if you know, there's, there's a demonstration going outside. I, I looked out. I saw people, a uh, yeah, 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 group of people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, close them down. <laughs> wow. It was bad. So mm. people are leaving church and people are picketing in front of them. God told me, uh, they, they, they have lost, that's their last effort. You know, and Satan makes himself physical. He has lost the battle. That's right. That's right. That's right. When the attack are no longer spiritual, they become material. That's right. The devil has lost it. There is no more victory. It's done. The plan is finished. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Mm-hmm. There's nothing more to offer. Wow. Finished. Amen. So what I'm trying to explain to you is this. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. You can have power and not have authority. Everyone that has the Holy Spirit, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when people say, pick up your authority, I'm like, how can you pick up an authority? Is it just laying on the street? (laughs) Take a hold of your authority. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. Do you really take a hold of authority? When a prince is born, the prince already sees people obeying them because they're already ready to sit on the throne, even though their time hasn't come. They have a level of influence not because of them, but because of their father. Yes, yes. Because of their mother who is on the throne. Yes. So already, they already have power virtue by virtue of connection. Yes. Because there will be a future successor. So they have to be respected, they have to be honored, and they have power. But their authority as a prince overrides any kind of council member or anybody. Yes. yes. Right. They don't pick up authority. They just find that they say, I want this, and everyone has to cater to it. Do that, and everybody. It's not something you pick up. And if you have to pick up authority, you don't know what authority is. That's good. good. How do you receive authority? This is the question. How do you receive authority? If you go to the centurion man, who was with the Lord Jesus, who they sent a word to him, to Jesus, to say his servant is sick and the man has been good to our people. What can you do for him? The Lord Jesus said that he was going to go and help this man. But when the man heard that Jesus was on his way, he sent a message and said, Lord, why do you need to come? You don't need to come here. You don't need to be here. I myself, I am a man under authority. Not I am a man of authority. I am a man under authority. You can never walk in authority unless it is delegated to you. That's good. If you're not under somebody of authority, you cannot have authority. Authority, Listen, authority does not come by prayer. Authority has never come upon anybody because of prayer. Authority comes upon you based on God's grace given to you to lead a particular area. Yes. When you're given a grace to lead a particular group of people,
Anyone that has never sat under somebody, not, yeah, that is my church. Yeah, sometimes I agree with him. Sometimes I don't agree with her. Sometimes I hear some. If you have that kind of character, you have never sat under power. You will never have authority. Because authority is given. Yes. Authority is not received by prayer. Power will be given to you because you pray. Because every child of God must have power because we serve a powerful God. But God doesn't give everybody authority. The authority that Samuel walked in, not just the power, the authority that he walked in, permitted that no word he spoke fell to the ground. That's right. God has to back up every single thing you say because he's put you in a place of leadership. And the sign of leadership is not forcing things. That's how people become tyrants. That's how people become dictators. That's how people become manipulators. That's how people, be- people become narcissists. That's how it even ends up into witchcraft because you want, to, to, you want people to hear you. You want people to follow you. But they don't seem to connect with you even though you have some level of power. So what you have to do is you have to play mind games. You have to do things to make people be subject unto you like Simon the sorcerer. He bewitched the whole city so that people can look at him and say, surely he is God's power. Right. Right. That's right. Amen. People like Bar Jesus that were sorcerers, they wanted people to revere them without the ability to save, deliver, change people's lives and bring them to God. Because the point of a leader is to make somebody better than themselves. It's not for people to remain under you. It is never to put people under you. It is never to belittle people. It is never to make people feel like they are nothing. Exactly. It is to empower people. It is to raise people. So we even find men of God fighting with other men of God because they have noticed that you have a level of influence a level of power. God has lifted you. You can do this. And they have been preaching for so long. Yes. They don't have that. And they will say, man, I am an elder. You see, an elder is not necessarily a man of authority. Right. Right. You can be an elder in age. If you are actually an elder by the spirit, you understand that, you know what? Um, This one, God's hand is on him. You can't do anything about it. That one, the finger of God is on them. You can't do anything about it. What puts a distinction or what sets a distinction, what separates is the content of authority where somebody has been put in. And authority is always given by those who are ready to give up their life for God. Those who are willing to die. Mm for the gospel, those who are willing to suffer for the gospel, those who are willing to do anything possible to bring God's will to come to pass. God has to give you something that will confirm your words, not his word. Right. Mark 16, verse 17. Mark 16 and 17. Mark 16, 17. Amen. Uh huh. And these signs? And these signs shall mm-hmm. follow them that believe. Mm-hmm. In my name shall they cast out devils. Mm-hmm. They shall speak with new tongues. Mm-hmm. They shall take up serpents. 
mm-hmm. and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Mm-hmm. They shall lay hands on the sick, mm-hmm. and they shall recover. Mm-hmm. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. And they went forth and preached everywhere, Mm -hmm. the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. The Lord went working with them. When you are a man of authority, because now you have become a representative, you are not just talking about him, but you are representing him. God has to stand by you to confirm every word that you are saying. Yes. Confirming your words, not his, your words. That's right. You see, when you are in power, when you're in the realm of power, you're in the realm of the word of God. The word of God is powerful. When you're in the realm of power, you are dealing in the realm of scripture. When you enter into the realm of authority, for you it is not just scripture, but everything that comes out of you becomes God's word. If you curse somebody, they are cursed. You bless somebody, they are blessed. You embrace somebody, God embraces them. You forgive their sins, God forgives it. That's right. I got Isn't it. this what the, the Lord said? He said, go into That's all right. the world. Whoever you condemn, they are condemned. That's right. Whoever you forgive their sins, they are forgiven. Right. The person doesn't even need to repent. You can decide to forgive them. That's right. You can come and say, uh, I'm going to pray for you. You've been bad. But today your sins are forgiven. I declare your sins forgiven. What? That's the word. This is the realm of authority. That's right. You have become an executive Oh, glory. On behalf of God. Yes, sir. You've become an executive on behalf of God. You've become somebody that stands, (coughs) speaks in place of the Lord, like Peter. Mm. They come to him, they say, Peter, we sold our land, this and this. He says, are you sure? Yes, we did. Say, why did you feel the need to lie to the Holy Spirit? No, I'm talking to Peter. No, you're not talking to Peter. I I am Holy Spirit right now. You are trying to deceive God. Peter, how did you become God? Mm. You thought you were lying to me, but you are lying to the Holy Spirit. Wait, if you told me it was the Holy Spirit, I would have never lied. But how is the Holy Spirit speaking just like you, Peter? Behaving just like you, Peter. Yeah. Uh, did you say, yes, we saw this. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Why did you allow the devil to corrupt your heart? You thought you were talking to me. Didn't you know you are talking to the Holy Spirit? Wait, I, it sounds just like you. You behave just like you. What changed? A man of authority. A woman of authority. Yes. Dealing with them is dealing with God. Yes. Amen. And the boy Samuel ministered unto the Lord in the presence of Eli, not in the presence of God. The boy Samuel ministered unto the Lord in the presence of Eli. So the presence of God to Samuel was who? Eli. The ark of the covenant was there. The Bible did not say he ministered to the ark. He never said he took care of the temple. He said he ministered to Eli. And by ministering to Eli, he was ministering to God. God. One of the things that you have to understand, there is a divine order. There is a powerful divine order that God goes by. And if there is no divine order, everything in a child of God falls apart. We are called to walk in divine order. Divine. 
divine order. Divine order. And if you walk in divine order, there is honor that you walk in. There is humility that you will possess. Amen. There are things you will do that will follow a level of protocol. There will be no puffing up of self because you understand that what you have is flowing from somewhere. A lot of believers have cut off the flow Mm. of the blessing of God because God blesses you in Power Chapel or whatever church, I just threw a name out there. Let's say Mountain of Glory Church. (laughs) Benny, what was your church name? Fire of Deliverance Church. (laughs) You went there and God blessed you. But when you got the blessing, you disconnected and went to another church. Mm-hmm. You just killed the grace that blessed you. That's right. You just, you just cut the line. That's right. Because what produced for you was not that other church. It was the person you ministered to. That through the grace that is on them that you received something. Right. This is why the church even disconnects with other men of God carelessly. Right. They are careless in their disconnection. I'm not saying you have to be with somebody for eternity. There are times you may outgrow a place and God may tell you, you know, go somewhere else. But if you leave, you live honorably. You will live respectfully. In fact, when you leave, the church will miss you. They will, oh man, what an amazing help you were to us. Father, send somebody else Mm -hmm. of that kind of that caliber. Father, do something of that nature for us again. You'll be a gem that everyone will desire. But the moment, you see, Christians have dishonor. You'll find people who have never led anybody will be busy talking about, you know, to be honest with you, I'm sorry to say this, I don't know what Christian commentary is. Christians were called to preach the gospel, not to comment on videos. We have become tabloids. It's become more of a gossip. It's no longer educational. It's become opinion. That's right. Not let's look at scripture. Okay, this and this happened. You see it influenced the culture. Okay, guys, let's look at scripture so that we can be on the right side of God. It's not like that. It is more about uh, this is my opinion of this and this is how I feel about this. This one is this. We have become like TMZ. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's bad. We are called to preach, not to to give commentary. Yes. If you want God to lift you, if you want God to make you walk in authority, every church has an altar. In fact, there is no spiritual activity without an altar. An altar is the meeting point with God. Yes, yes, yes. The reason why there is sorcery and witchcraft in your family, some of you, you needed to break, is because an altar still existed. That's right. If that altar is not dealt with, calamity still will come. That's right. Because that altar, the purpose of the altar is the meeting point. That's That's where covenants are made. That's where agreements are made. That's right. That's where things are established spiritually. That's right. It is not only a physical thing, it's also a spiritual thing. Amen. There is an internal altar in you. That is why Bishop was saying, there are spirits that will camouflage something to make you curse, say something wrong. That's right. Because the moment you declare something out of your mouth, it is put on the altar that is within yes. you. Wow. 
<laughs> because there is a place of meeting in you. That's right. That's why demons can enter you. That is why the Holy Spirit also can enter you. There is a meeting point within you. That's right. That is why James says, how can bitter waters and clean waters come from the same place? Because there is an altar within you. Yes. That is why you can call on God and God can hear you. But remember, if God can hear you, others can also hear you. There is an internal altar. And then there is an altar that is of the bloodline. This is what is holding now the family. Right, 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 right. Amen. This is why when you break a family altar, it is the bloodline that is delivered. It is the bloodline that is what? Delivered. Yes. And then now there is your altar within you. If God so willeth and makes you the head of the family spiritually, it is from your altar now that will be used for the family. Yes. This is why yes. through one man sin entered the world. And through one man God destroyed sin from the world. The curse of sin entered everybody because of Adam's altar. That's right. That's right. And the world has been saved because of Jesus' who? Altar. Yes. A man had the power to cast out demons and demons were subject to him because he joined himself to Jesus' altar. He knew who Jesus was. Amen. His disciples saw him. They stopped him and they went to Jesus and said it proudly. Lord, we found somebody using your name and we stopped right. him. Amen. Jesus was shocked. He said, you said he was doing what? Yeah, he was casting out demons. Why did you stop him? He's not against us. He caught it. How did he deliver people? He caught something. Wow. Yes. The sons of Sceva knew about Jesus. It did not work. But this man could make it work. He entered into something. Yes. What altar are you connected to? Will determine the authority you walk in. What is your spiritual heritage? It will determine it. Whoever, that's why you find the children of Israel always claimed the altars of their fathers. Yes. Say so the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. They referred to their names because they were attached to a certain covenant on a certain altar. If you are not under authority, you will never have authority. That's right. You will never have authority. Right. I'll say it one more time. If you have never been under authority, you will never have authority. Elisha was extremely powerful because he was under authority. Joshua was extremely powerful because he was under authority. Mm. But you notice Joshua, nobody served Joshua the way he served Moses. That authority disappeared. Nobody served Elisha the way he served Elijah. That authority also disappeared. Wow. How do we sustain the lifeline of authority? Because it is delegated. God knows I served my mom faithfully. When the Lord gave me a new mother and a new father, I serve faithful as much as I can. Last night, my father called me and said, uh, uh, I like your snake suit. Can you, your snake jacket, I need that one. I work one time, I said, yes, sir. Uh, I need this. Do you have anything else that you haven't touched? I said, yes, sir. Gathered it, drove, came back home like around midnight, actually, right on me, because I had to drive to church. From church, I had to go. Uh, to Mama Gana's house to deliver it, spent a little time, then come. All this because you have to be, uh, if you cannot be 
subject to authority, yes. you will never have authority to help others. Right. Yes, yes. Good. Authority begets authority. We have a lot of Christians who are in the realm of power but have never entered the realm of authority. Right. When you enter the realm of authority, God begins to have counsel with you. God begins to reason with you because now you have to go and represent him. So you can't be in the dark about things. God will sit down and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what, what do you think about this? Not because he needs our opinion. Right. But he has to bring you into what he's doing. Yes. He has to bring you into what he's doing. Again, I will ask you. Who are you sitting under? I'm not saying this so that you say Revelation Church is my church. No. Maybe God sent you to another church. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you will not be subject under authority. You see, us, we are not fake men of God will tell you. That one is fake. Don't go to this one. Go to this one. No, 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 no. We'll never tell you that. If you have the spirit of God in you, you should know. Right. I shouldn't have to tell you that. That's right. If you That's really right. love Jesus and you're after Jesus, you would know. Nobody needs to announce that to you. That's right. You need to ask yourself, what is the place I have joined myself to? If I have indeed joined myself, if I have indeed joined myself, then something will happen to me. Yes. That will glorify God. Amen. Whether your church is another church, but that man, that woman is of authority, serve that place so that you can receive that inheritance. Because I've discovered that authority only comes by service. Yes. And not just service, faithful service. Not just service, but what? Faithful service. Not just service, but faithful, extremely faithful service. When we get to that place, it becomes easy to fulfill what God wants. Yes. Sometimes go to your church, ask them, hey, can I sweep the church? Can I arrange the church? Give yourself a day that you go into your church, you do some volunteer stuff. If they need you to clean the front, clean the toilets, that is what it takes yes. to walk in authority. You have to be subject. Yes. You have to be a servant that is willing to do anything for the sake of Christ. If that willingness is not there, if you cannot take direction, you cannot take or if you cannot settle down to be instructed because I have been there, I've been praying for a long time, I've been pastor for a long time, I've been bishop. You know, think up th you know, I always say that submission is power under control. But I've come to realize that submission is also the highest level of maturity. Because there are people who don't need to submit, but they are submitted. If you look at, at our great handsome apostle, Apostle Rico Suave. <laughs> apostle Rico Suave, you hear him calling me Papa, yet he's my big brother. He's my big brother. He doesn't need to do that. He used to force me to pray. I would dodge his 5 a.m. prayers. But he will even see me say, Papa. I'm like, ah, Apostle, please. But it is the understanding of divine order. Amen. Even our own drill sergeant, the way he deals with me, I'm like, hey, these are my old men. These are my fathers in the church. They are our elders. But there is a certain way yes. that they can't even do something. Not because, you know, I'm like, I'm, I am... I know everything that is going on, but I choose to stay out of it because I let, I am not a control person. I'm not controlling. That I am not. 
Things are delegated and I leave them. If I come in, it's because my attention is very needed. If not, me, I live by the law of Moses that Jethro gave him. Amen. Let ninjas figure out their mess. Amen. If I come in, it's because the house is on fire and it's about to burn to the ground. Amen. So I come in to settle it. Without that, don't bring me in. If you guys are going to fight, smack each other, at the end of it, kiss and hug and do the work of God. Amen. But I won't just step in every time there is something. I, I'm not, no, you won't find me. If you tell me, oh, we need to meet, can I meet with you? I ask you why in advance. <laughs> because if it's anything to do with something, I'll just be like, okay, we'll talk and you won't hear from me for a long time. I avoid those things. Mm-hmm. It's because I'm not controlling. I don't like to be in Amen. things. Right. What am I getting to? Divine order determines what you receive. If God is a God of order and you align yourself, something happens. Virtue of alignment. There are so many of us that are lone rangers, ronins, masterless samurais running around. You will never know authority. God will use you to set a few people free. But you will never become great. Greatness won't be there. Because authority makes men great. Yes. David was always powerful. He killed a lion. He killed a bear with his own bare hands. Meaning that he received strength to be stronger than Samson. Samson killed a young lion. He killed a lion and a bear and took the lamb out of its mouth. He didn't have a sword. He was a teenager. How did he kill it? He said he grabbed the lion like this and took the lamb out. How did he do it? Amen. But guess what? You never knew about it until he told you. There was no authority. If you have power, you may do great things no one will ever hear about you. David said, I killed lions, I killed bears. I even took the lamb out of his mouth. I held him and took the lamb. This uncircumcised Philistine will be no different. But notice, we know about Goliath because authority came. (laughs) That when he went into the camp, even the king wanted to see him. There's a young boy who's willing to fight Goliath. He was a young boy who couldn't even carry a sword. But the whole nation believed he can beat Goliath. Mm. I don't think you're seeing it. Mm. His brothers were bigger than him. They were giant. They were great men. He couldn't even put on armor. Imagine they were putting on armor on him and it was too big. He couldn't even handle a sword. But the whole nation was backing him up to remove shame from them. That's what authority does. That's what authority does. It makes you a giant. Yes. Somebody asked, uh, can I be under authority if I'm in another country or another city? Absolutely. Because it's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. There are people who are close, but spiritually they are far. And there are people who are far, spiritually they are close. So it's not a physical distance thing. It's the yielding thing. When the prophet is on, do I take every word that he's saying seriously? Is that what I live by? Is that what I go by? Is my faith rooted in that? Then you're aligned. The problem is some of you also, another mistake I found, I'm not against listening to other people. But me, myself, I don't. Because different doctrines will move you also a different way. That's right. Because if, if Bishop right. believes in deliverance, and I don't believe in deliverance, but we are all preaching Jesus, and you listen to <coughs> me, and then you go to Bishop, you will have to leave one. Wow. Right. Both doctrines cannot exist together. That's right. It will quench the spirit. That's right. Amen.
it will quench the spirit. If you're going to listen to somebody, listen to them that are aligned with what also you are fed. So it enhances (coughs) what you already have. Yes. But if the belief is different, there is no prophecy except scripture. And then you come on Thursday, can I prophesy? Ah, You'll be in trouble. Right. Your faith will be afflicted. Right. Stand up, we're going to pray. Everybody stand. No, Bishop, you can sit. Okay. We're going to pray together here. Okay. Stand up, we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Today I understand. Today I understand. That without you. Without you. Without divine order. Without divine order. I am incapable of accomplishing anything. I am incapable of accomplishing anything. Father, give me a submissive heart. Father, give me a submissive heart. Despite the anointing in my life. Despite the anointing in my life. Despite me being chosen. Despite me being chosen. Father, my God. Father, my God. Teach me to be submissive. 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 Lord Jesus, you asked us to imitate you. 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 You said you are humble and lowly. You said you are humble and lowly. Open our eyes to see ourselves. Open our eyes to see ourselves. As we truly are. As we truly are. So that we may be changed for your glory. So that we may be changed for your glory. So that we may become better for your glory. Better. In your own words, I want you to pray and speak to God to open your eyes that you will turn away from pride. Yes. Because authority does not come to prideful people. Pride is poison. Lift your voice and ask God to open your eyes so that you begin to know yourself. So that you can align yourself with God. So that you can walk under divine authority. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. Yes. Shout out our voice.